Think about a time in your life when you were particularly strained. Maybe you were under a lot of stress or you had an upcoming deadline. How did you react to the actions and speech of others? Were you particularly touchy, particularly sensitive to what they had to say to you and what they did? Molecules behave the exact same way. In other words, when a molecule is placed under strain, it tends to be more reactive than when it's in an unstrained, more stable state. The reaction coordinate diagrams on this slide illustrate the idea energetically. When a molecule is placed under strain, or placed into a strain conformation, it's raised in energy. As long as this doesn't affect the transition state energy for the process it needs to undergo, the activation energy to go from the strained enzyme substrate complex to the transition state is lowered by the introduction of strain. An unstrained enzyme substrate complex would have to surmount a larger barrier in order to end up at the same product. And just as most of us get sensitive when we're in a strained state, molecules are more sensitive to reactivity when they exist in strained conformations. Strain can manifest itself in a variety of ways. You most often hear about it in the context of steric interactions or simple bumping between groups. We talk about steric interactions, for instance, in the difference in energy between cis and trans isomers. But strain can manifest itself in other ways, too. For instance, consider the amide on this slide. The amide in this state in the upper left exhibits rather low electrophilicity because the carbonyl pi star, which is the LUMO of this amide, is receiving electron density from the nitrogen lone pair in an n to pi star type interaction. If we could remove this n to pi star pi type interaction, we could essentially render the amide about as electrophilic as a ketone, which doesn't have this advantage of extra electron donation. Just like the bridgehead lactam from lecture 15, if there is a structural element in the active site of the enzyme, such as a zinc atom or other electron acceptor that can orient the carbonyl's pi star perpendicular to the amide lone pair, then delocalization of the lone pair is no longer possible. The two orbitals are at right angles and exhibit no net overlap. The result of this is an overall destabilization of the amide's pi star orbital. It's more able to accept electrons from a nucleophile, such as water. The key intermediate here is the strained conformation of the amide when it's complex to the zinc atom in the active site of the enzyme. That zinc atom is held in place probably by electron donating residues in the active site, and it forces the carbon-oxygen double bond to exist parallel to the amide lone pair. You should begin to consider strain as catalytically important if you see a substrate undergoing a reaction that it's normally fairly stable with respect to. For instance, we know that the amide is one of the least electrophilic carbonyl groups in all of organic chemistry. It's curious, then, why it would be undergoing a nucleophilic addition reaction from water. We can explain why this amide is undergoing this step that it's ordinarily very stable with respect to using the concepts of strain that we just discussed. 